best coming to the doctor engineer channel today we are going to continue what we did in the previous video that is the one dimensional consolidation settlement variation so as we discussed in the previous video we already know what is consolidation so consolidation is a process by which the soil settles by expelling the water in it and without any replacement of yeah we already have seen that and uh, today we are going to see about the settlement uh, variation uh, in the soil from the time it has formed first. So when you take a soil, so in, when we go back in millions of years back in the geological time, the soil would have formed for the very first time in a particular layer. So this would be the first layer, first layer. And by the time goes, the soil gets layers build up above in it and it will be uh, in increasing the load which is experienced by the uh, soil. So when we plot this in a graph, it's in a semi log plot uh, between effective stress in log scale and wide ratio of the soil. For the very first load the soil has experienced, the void ratio would start to decrease in a certain amount. So as time goes on, the layers builds up, the void ratio decreases and the effective stress increases. At a certain moment, let's say uh, we are excavating uh, the soil, soil for a one-dimensional consolidation test which we are going to perform in our laboratory. So the void ratio would now start to increase and the effective stress would start to decrease at a certain time. So you will see that there would be a variation here between the initial void ratio and the void ratio after excavation. This is due to the plastic nature of the soil. So the soil is a plastic material, so it is not something like uh, elastic material, for example, rubber bands. So when you expand the rubber band and release the force provided, it uh, reaches back to its initial position. But in the case of soil, it is not such that the soil is a plastic material. Once it has experienced some amount of consolidation and when you retrieve back the force applied, it won't go back to the initial state of it. So once you have brought this back to the laboratory and you start applying the load again in a one-dimensional consolidation test, it won't follow back the same path due to its plastic nature again. So I'll explain it in a moment. So it will follow a path like this in the blue ink. And again, it will follow the same path of this portion. It will continue this path, and after again, when you are un when your unloading sequence begins, it again returns back. So, this variation here, this variation is very important. You have to understand the concept here. So, this is like something. Now, let's say the soil has undergone consolidation first, and it has attained a certain amount of strength. So when you are again applying a load, it won't, uh, the soil would not have to apply such uh, a, the same amount of effort to carry the load. So it would easily carry the load with a, um, as it has already experienced it. As we uh, discussed in the previous videos, we know that the soil has different states that is especially when it comes to clay it has two states which is NC and OC so when it comes to OC this is this can bear much large stresses because it has already bear some large stresses in its history so that is why it is called as OC so here in this area the soil is under O consolidated state so when it first rebounds 
So when it uh, rebounds back, it has all it's experiencing the forces which we it had already experienced in its history. Again, you are applying the same force, so it won't settle back to the initial settlement which it, it had settled in the case of rebounding. For example, you could uh, compare this to a person who is attending a gym who is doing exercises. For the first time when he is uh, lifting uh, 100 kilogram weight, he, he would have to put large effort and uh, has to lift it. So once he has enough amount of practice and he has gained the strength for that, it is not a big matter to lift that 100 kilogram. Similarly, once the, for the very first time the soil settles more, once it has experienced that load, the soil won't experience, soil won't need such amount of settlement to go back to that, uh, the load, so, sorry, so the soil won't need such settlement as um, for the load it has experienced more. Right. Now you can see that we are applying, we are drawing the graph for effective stress rather than considering the total stress. So here you have to think a moment that when you take a sample when in a lab test, in a one-dimensional one lab test, lab test, we know the load applied. We know the load applied, we know this one, we know the area of the sample, but we don't know the water pressure. That is the pore water pressure. So then, why without this pore water pressure, we are just using the effective stress here. There's a reason for that. We'll come into that. That is, When we take a soil sample, which we use for the one-dimensional consolidation test, the sample is a cylindrical portion, which is typically uh, 20 mm. So this would be the soil. So we would be having uh, two filter papers. One is at the top and another one is at the bottom. So other than the filter paper, we would be having a porous stone, so this would be a porous stone, so porous stones, so this would be also a porous stone, and above this porous stone there will be a loading cap, loading cap, other than the, other than this there would be just a cylindrical ball, uh, a, spear, a spherical ball to apply the load vertically to the uh, sample. So these two are the filter papers. So after assembling the setup in this manner, we used to fill this with water until uh, the entire sample is covered, something up to this level. And here it will be here, something like this to the bottom of the one dimensional consolidation cell. So the consolidation is calculated for the center of the sample. So when we see this height, this would be somewhat around 30 mm, maybe more or less, somewhat around 30 mm. So when you calculate the pressure applied due to that 30 mm of water, it is a very small amount. This would be negligibly small. So we know that from the principle uh, of effective stress, sigma dash is equal to sigma minus u. So this u is approximately zero. So sigma dash would be equal to sigma that is equal to the applied load over area of the sample. That is why we are directly using the effective, effective stress for the practical, which, is, which we directly equate it to the total stress. Right. Now you would have seen that when we are drawing the graphs, we are using log scale without uh, using a regular 
arithmetic scale. So they are, that is because, so when we draw the graph for the variation of uh, white ratio, and effective stress, that is sigma dash, so it would be in this manner. Yeah, this would be the loading case, and this would be the unloading situation. So here, you can't see a much uh, variation between the loading and unloading. You can separate loading and unloading, other than that, you can't separate what is the pre you can find the pre-consolidation pressure. So here we can't find some uh, data, so it's a bit difficult. Uh, we can find one thing which is known as AV that is equal to minus D of delta E over D of sigma dash, that is the gradient of this graph, which is known as coefficient of coefficient of compressibility. So other than this, we can find mv, which is equal to av over 1 plus e naught. You know what is e naught? That is the initial void ratio. And mv is coefficient of volume compressibility. Right? So here, we can distinctly separate what are the rebound curves and what are the virgin curve and uh, what is the uh, recompression curve. We can separate it uh, easily. Uh, but when we convert this into a log logarithmic scale, that is in the semi-log plot, we can easily find what are the uh, virgin curve, recompression curve and the rebound curves. So as we have seen throughout these, the graphs are drawn for void ratio and uh, sigma dash. Typically, these can be drawn for strain and effective stress also. But in the case of drawing it for strain and effective stress, there is a small variation. That is, we are going to draw it for sigma dash and the strain or volumetric strain. So here, the scale would be increasing downwards increasing in this direction that is he is starting from zero here we would have some value let's say 2.5 or something we would have increasing values in the downward direction then the shape of the graph does not change when it comes to the linear scale the graph would be in this manner and it when, when it comes to the log scale in the semi log plot the shape would be in this so this is for the volumetric strain and for the sigma dash in log scale so there won't be much variation but uh, one major difference is the graph would be the y-axis would be increasing down uh, there's a reason for that because there's a direct relationship between the strain and the void ratio we can prove that easily uh, in the last video, I have shown a method and here we'll see another method which is much easier. So when we take the three-phase diagram, we know that before consolidation, so this is before consolidation, there would be three-phase, that is solid, the water, and the yeah so this would be our volume of void and this would be a volume of solid so after consolidation the soil would settle by a certain amount so this is after consolidation so this volume of solid do not change so this would be entirely this would be our settlement delta V. So this would be as same as Vs and this would be our volume of void. 
So I'm assuming this V is as 1. So we know, we know, I'm assuming this. So we know that void ratio E0 is equal to VV by Vs, that is volume of voids over volume of solid. So volume of void over 1, so this implies E0 is directly equal to volume of voids. Right. When you come to this, uh, this case, so this is VV dash, because the volume of void has changed. When you come into this case, so we know EF is equal to VV dash over VS and this implies EF is equal to VV dash, right? So the delta V, which is the change in volume, is equal to VV minus, that is the initial volume VV minus v v dash which would be equal to e naught minus e f as proven here so now the change in volume is directly equal to change in void ratio so volumetric strain so which is known as the ev volumetric strain we can write it as change in volume over initial volume initial volume is v s plus v v so change in volume, we know that it is equal to change in void ratio, which is delta E over Vs is 1 and Vv is equal to delta uh, Vv is equal to E0 has proven here, right? So this Vv volumetric strain, this is the relationship since 1 plus E0 is a constant that is directly equal to the change in void ratio so the graphs can be plotted for either for volumetric strain or void ratio but typically in soil we use the void ratio part rather than the strain and it's much easier for us so we know that vv from here we can write it as delta v over V total volume and taking total volume as V is equal to delta E over 1 plus E naught. So I'll assume this height as delta H and the total height as capital H. The area let the area be A. So change in volume can be written as A into delta H over change the total volume can be written as A into capital H that is equal to delta E over 1 plus E naught. So this implies, so that is the settlement, delta H is equal to delta E over 1 plus E naught into capital H. So this I have proved it already in the previous video in a different manner. And this is a bit different manner and much, much easier to handle this. Uh, so from this proof and this relationship, from this relationship, we can understand that the graphs can be plotted for both void ratio and uh, both void ratio and volumetric strain and it is better to use void ratio because uh, soil many, in many calculation we deal with void ratio rather than the strain right the next thing we are going to see is the void ratio versus effective stress graph the types of the graphs in that in the pre-consolidation pressure right so this would be our void ratio e this is our effective stress sigma dash the typical graph would be in somewhat in this manner so this would this won't be exactly straight lines it would be a curve mostly these are curves so from this, we can divide this into three portions, somewhat considered as straight lines. This is the first portion, which is the recompression curve. So this would be the second portion, the virgin curve. So this would be the third portion, the rebound curve. 
So as we have already seen in the first video, here the soil would be in the OC state, here the soil would be in the NC state, and here the soil would be in the OC state, typically the clay. So you can see the reduction in void ratio here is much smaller than the reduction in void ratio here. So here the void ratio reduces in high rate because under NC condition we know that the soil experiences new load as time goes on. So each moment it experiences the maximum stress for the first time in its history. So the settlement would be much higher. In these two cases the settlement would be lower as the load experiencing now is the load which the soil has already experienced in its soil history. So when we consider the gradients, there are there's a gradient for this graph which is known as CC, there's a gradient for this one which is CR and the gradient for this one is also mostly equal to CR. So as we have seen already, the soil would settle in this manner. So these lines follow the same trend. This virgin line follow the same trend, but the recompression and the rebound curve has a small variation. So we somewhat take this average line between them. So that follows the same gradient. The average between both these two are the gradient for that. So here, there's a method proposed by Casa Grande to find the pre-consolidation pressure. You already know what is pre-consolidation pressure. The pressure which the soil has, the maximum pressure the soil has experienced in its history. So to find the pre-consolidation pressure, we have to find a point here, which has the maximum curvature. There should be a sharp turn or there should be a maximum curvature. So in that point, we are going to draw a horizontal line and a tangential line for that one. After that, we are going to draw an angle bisector for that. Then continuing from the bottom, we are going to draw a tangent for the virgin curve. So the meeting point of the angle bisector and the tangent drawn for the virgin curve gives the pre-consolidation pressure. So that is simple as that. So this would be the pre-consolidation pressure sigma p. Right? So but doing questions and handling with this graph is a bit difficult because these three portions are not exactly straight lines. So there are some method proposed by a German person, a German geotechnical engineer known as Schmertmann, where he has proposed an idea to convert this graph into three straight lines. The, this is um, uh, proposed by Schmertmann in around 1953. So we already know the graph So this is the sigma dash, this would be our void ratio and this would be our graphs. So Smartphone proposed to do this in three major strips. So we are going to find three points here, A, B and C. So we are going to find this in this order. I will not So to find A, we need to know what was the overburden stress of the soil with, when we removed it from the site. So that is the in situ overburden stress. So when we, when we went for the sampling and when we removed the soil from the site or from the location, you would have to note down and calculate what would be that what would be the overburden stress at the site. So first we have to mark that overburden stress which is known as the sigma dash V naught. 
and this would be our vertical line and you have to find the initial void ratio of that so that is the in situ initial void ratio which would have been in the site so this would be the first point a so first we have to find the overburden stress which was applied on the soil in the site in its natural state and the respective void ratio for that so the connecting point of these two will give you the first point a the second thing is you would have already calculated and find the uh, pre-consolidation pressure from the method of Casa Grande. So we have to draw a straight line from the curvature, then a tangent, then the angle bind sector, then a tangent from the virgin curve and this would give you the uh, pre-consolidation pressure and draw a straight line through that vertical line through that point which would give the pre-consolidation pressure right then the third thing is we are going to find the gradient of this rebound curve so the gradient of this rebound curve the CR so one could question as the gradient of this rebound curve and the recompression curve are equal, why can't we use this recompression curve? So as this is the start of an practical in a lab practical, so we are facing a porous stone and with the paper and loading cap above the soil and then we are applying the load. So the entire load would not transfer to the soil, there would be some errors and there may be some contact issues and there might be much larger errors when we start a practical then we are ending a practical so this would be much accurate than this so that is why it is better to use a result from the end of the practical so here we know the gradient and then we draw a parallel line through A with the same gradient CR So this parallel line intersects the pre-consolidation pressure line at this point which is B. So we have found A and we have found B. The third point is you have to locate 0.42 times E0 that is 42 percentage of initial void ratio and draw a straight line through that point so you can ask why specially it's 0.42 so somewhat this is less than 50 percent so 50 percent of the initial void ratio is that is the soil has undergone 50 percentage of settlement so when you start a soil test at 20 mm of height now it is reduced to 10 mm that is a very large settlement uh, so naturally it is not uh, possible to undergo such large settlement unless the soil is very weak so this value is performed by Tesagi himself in around 1957 if I am right uh, yeah, I think so. I'm not sure about the year. Uh, so this is this. I'm um, but it's. I'm confident that uh, this was performed. This was uh, calculated, and this theory was put forward by Tesagi himself. So there should be a limit somewhere. We have to stop that somewhere, right? So this this is the value uh, that is put forward, and we have to draw a straight line through that, and then extend the virgin curve which we have obtained from the lab practical to meet that line so this would be the point c so now we are going to connect this point b and c so i'm going to draw this in the red ink so this would be our first line and this would be our second line so this is known as corrected virgin curve so the gradient of this curve 
known as CC is the in situ gradient. The gradient of this curve CC is the in situ gradient. Here, this is the corrected recompression curve. So now you have distinct straight lines so that you can work out questions easily. Right? I'll show you the general theory how we are going to work out this. I'll erase this diagram. Should be the sigma dash effective stress. This would be a void ratio, and according to Smartman, the graph would be something like this. Very easy to handle now. So this would be our CR gradient, and this would be our CC gradient. We know that uh, we can now find the settlement from this graph very easily. We already know that settlement delta is equal to change in void ratio over one plus e naught, the initial void ratio into height of the specimen. So let's say now a practical our question starts from this portion which is E naught our initial void ratio and end here which is EF the load the stress here is sigma 1 the stress here is sigma 2 this is sigma 1 sigma 1 dash and sigma 2 dash and this would be our pre-consolidation pressure sigma P dash and the respective uh, void ratio would be EP. I'll assume it as EP. So from this gradient, using this gradient CR and CC, we can write as CR equal to E naught minus EP over log sigma P dash over sigma 1 dash. So this is simple logarithm. So you have to reduce sigma P dash minus sigma 1 dash when you are subtracting logarithms, we, when you take it as a common, so just we can divide it. So uh, similarly, CC can be written as uh, EP minus E naught, sorry, EP minus EF over log sigma 2 dash over sigma P. So when you add these two, you can, before adding, you have to cross multiply and add when you're adding these two you can find we can find e naught minus here so that would be equal to cr into log sigma p dash or sigma one dash plus cc into log sigma two dash or sigma p dash so here the settlement is equal to E naught minus EF that is the delta E so this is the delta E into 1 1 over 1 plus E naught into delta H so you have to substitute this here and find the settlement delta so delta can be calculated so here you have to be careful so the questions can come in the papers that is uh, the sigma 1 and sigma 2 both can lie either left of the pre-consolidation pressure that is both can be the soil will be in only in over consolidated state EO both the stress can be in the right side of the pre-consolidation pressure that is the NC case or something like this which we have the most uh, somewhat difficult part the soil would transfer from OC to NC. So the questions come, can come in uh, all three things. These two are a bit easier to handle. This is a bit tricky but not that much difficult. We can solve questions also. So okay guys, I think uh, you would have gained some knowledge from here. Like, share and uh, comment uh, subscribe my channel and press the bell icon for the notifications and uh, in the next video we'll meet up uh, with some questions and uh, see you soon